Hey everyone, I'm Mike Bond, Sports Information Director at Finlandia University here in Hancock, Michigan. Today is day one of the NCAA Division III Mental Health Week. Uh, over the next four days, Division III institutions from across the country will be taking to their social media platforms to talk about mental health, how to improve it, and more specifically, how to break the stigma surrounding it. Uh, we encourage you to post your thoughts, comments, whatever you want to share with us uh, on hashtag break the stigma. Again, that's hashtag break the stigma. So I'm going to take some time today and I'm going to talk about uh, how to improve your mental health and also talking about you know the stigma surrounding it and how to break it. Uh, to me, well first of all, let's start talking about you know the differences here. We always talk about our physical health. We're going to lose weight, exercise more, uh, get more sleep, worry about what we're eating, you know, putting into our bodies, etc., etc., etc. You don't hear a lot of talk about mental health, how you're going to improve that. And the two go hand in hand. They're both very important, and especially now with everything that's been going on with the COVID-19 pandemic, our mental health is more important than it ever has been. So, first of all, let's take a look at the word, or the phrase, I should say, mental health. To me, it's kind of a hypocritical statement, because when somebody says that they're going to see a psychiatrist or therapist about marriage counseling or a substance abuse problem or gambling, stuff like that, that's fine. We have no problem with it. When somebody says, you know, I'm going to go see a therapist or a psychiatrist because I feel depressed or I feel suicidal or I have anxiety issues, we throw up the red flag. You know, we, we treat it so totally different, like we think it's, it's wrong, and then we start talking about, you know, oh my God, look at that, that person, what's wrong with them? they got to go see a psychiatrist. Um, you know, I, I liken it to something that my dad has always told us. A foolish person does not ask for help when they need it, or a wise person asks for help when they need it. It would be absolutely foolish of me to try and figure out a car problem because I don't know that much about cars. So I get wise by asking my dad, who's 89 years old and has been working on cars for 76 years. He has forgotten more about cars than most people know. So. In that sense, I'm being a wise person and not foolish. The mental health is the same thing, okay? You need help. It doesn't matter where you get it as long as you get the help that you need, okay? And that's really what it's all about. Don't care what other people say. You're the only person that matters, okay? You've got to do what's right for you. Now, in terms of sharing a, being a, seeing a psychiatrist, excuse me, um, I'll be honest here, I've actually seen one. Um, it was a couple of months before my 34th birthday. Up to that point in my life, uh, I had a hard time managing my money. And I also, you know, had a hard time maintaining a job for a prolonged period of time. I had issues in my social relationships, uh, particularly in the area of dating. Uh, I tended to forget things uh, quite easily. Uh, I had some, you know, anger management issues. Um, there were certain concepts that seemed a lot harder for me to grasp uh, than most people. And I really wasn't sure what was going on. And I also was, was hyper, I had a lot of energy. So I wasn't sure what was going on. So my parents and I sat down and we talked. And we asked a family friend of ours who was a psychiatrist, uh, Dr. Safran, for help. And he gave us the name of a fellow psychiatrist that could help me, uh, Dr. Columbia. So when I would tell them, I told my friends, like, oh, yeah, I can't do anything this afternoon. I got to go see my psychiatrist. They're like, what's wrong with you? And I just looked at him and said, well, if I knew what was wrong with me, I wouldn't be going seeing Dr. Columbia. That's what I'm going to. So... I had three sessions with her and we talked and I took a bunch of tests and at the end of the third session uh, it was 
you know, she came to the conclusion that number one, I had a learning disability, which I got to tell you right now, I've never called it that. I call it that I have a unique learning opportunity uh, with the English language, specifically the rules and structures. Uh, the other issue that I had was that I was uh, had adult attention deficit disorder. Now, when she told me that, there was a bit of a pause, and I actually started crying. And she asked me, she goes, what's wrong? Why are you crying? And I said, I go, you know, I'm not crying because I'm scared. I'm not crying because, you know, I'm upset. I'm crying tears of joy, you know, because everything that you have just told me now fits with everything that I've been having problems with, and it makes sense now. I said, for the longest time, I thought I was dumb and stupid. Now I realize that I've got two issues that are going on, and now I know what they are. I can have a plan of attack on how to deal with them. Going to Dr. Columbia was the best decision that I ever made in my life. Um, I've really made a lot of strides since that that time. I start I started using an Excel spreadsheet to keep track of my expenses, and after a while, I started figuring out how much I was actually spending, and I was able to curb my spending habits. Um, you know, in terms of the English language, I write everything personal and work-related and Microsoft Word. Not only does it tell me what words are misspelled, it also tells me what rules I'm breaking, and it tells me why I'm breaking them, how I'm breaking them, and I look at that definition and I, I can start to make sense in my mind, and so I don't make those same mistakes over and over again. Um, I write everything to do for the week on a whiteboard in my office. Anybody comes in and asks me something or needs something done, I put it on the whiteboard so I don't forget. I've got a project list on my computer, so anytime I'm going to start a new project, boop, pull it up. I look at my list and say, oh, nope, i got five going on, I can't start another one. Ah, you know what, I only have two or three, I can start it. But it, it's really done a lot to help me get these issues under, under control, and uh, my mental health has been improved so much because of it. So now let's talk about ways to improve your mental health okay well, let's be honest here all right there's a lot of stress that goes on in life your personal relationships relationships with family you got your your stresses at jobs you got a lot of stuff that's just pulling you all over the place you got to have an outlet for it okay you got to have something that makes you relax I mean particularly my job I work seven days a week 70 to 80 hours a week I'm basically on call 24-7, and everything has a time deadline, and I got coaches throwing things on me at the last minute, or this comes up, and I got to change this, and it's, it's hard sometimes. It puts a lot of stress on you, and you got to figure out ways to alleviate that. So for me, that's pretty simple. This past weekend, um, I like Legos. So this past weekend, I spent about four or five hours uh, building uh, a Lego model of skyscrapers in Chicago. Um, I like watching uh, cartoons, Johnny Quest, uh, Wacky Races, Scooby-Doo, just to name a few. Uh, I watch old-time TV shows, uh, Perry Mason, uh, Peter Gunn, Ellery, Quinn, uh, Ellery Queen. Excuse me. Um, I also I like doing puzzles. I play video games. Uh, when I feel my batteries need to be recharged, so to speak, I just get in the car and drive up the peninsula to Copper Harbor. Um, I play the putt-putt mini golf up there, which is great. Uh, on the way back, I stop and, you know, read all historical plaques on the way. I even dip my feet in the Lake Superior for about five seconds so I don't freeze completely because it's cold. But when I get back to Hancock, I'm recharged. And the thing is, it doesn't matter what you do. You got to find ways to alleviate that stress and get out that boredom. Even if it's just taking a walk through the neighborhood for 15, 20 minutes. Anything to help, you know, decrease the amount of stress on it. Uh, don't feel afraid, like I said earlier, don't feel afraid to talk to people. Okay? When you, if you've got an. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a psychiatrist or a therapist. You 
can talk to anybody about it. Talk to your mom, your dad, somebody at work, you know, just, you know, you're shooting a breeze about stuff. Um, and don't be afraid to get help. You know, no matter what other people think, you know, it's just, it's you. You're the one that needs, that knows what you need to, to do. So hopefully this has helped you guys out. Um, again, I ask you guys to share your comments throughout this whole week uh, at uh, hashtag break the stigma. Uh, we'll, we will be having uh, former cross country runner Ashley Ajo will be on video tomorrow and then we close off the, our mental health week on Thursday with women's basketball head coach Mariah LaPointe Dunham. So hopefully you guys will be following along and sharing your thoughts and thanks a lot and have a great day.